Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about converting color images into black and white images. I personally am a huge fan of black and white photography. Back when I shot film all the time, I pretty much exclusively shot black and white. For me personally, I think of it this way, like we all experience the world in color, unless you're colorblind, of course, but most of us experience the world in, in, in color. And that's a dimension that we're used to seeing in reality. And when you have an image that is monochrome or you're only using black and white, you remove one layer of reality into abstraction. And for me, that abstraction is a way that you can use to create a mood, draw emphasis to your subject. It's very expressive in terms of what you can do with an image. And I always have considered black and white images, I would treat them very differently than I would when editing color images. Now, in the early days of photography, everything was pretty much monochrome or black and white. And then we moved into color photography and that's much different than what we have today with digital. Now we have images that come off of a camera in color and actually that gives us an enormous amount of power when we convert it to black and white in terms of what we can do with the image. Nothing is really locked in. So I've got some examples that I want to show you. We're going to be using Capture One for our examples in this video. This will be another in our sponsored series of Capture One tutorials. If you want to see more, I will put a link in the show description. So make sure to check that out. But what I love about Capture One is it handles black and white images from kind of two different sides. So let me give you an example. This is just an image that we're going to work with here. And I think typically most people would think, okay, if I want to make this black and white, the fastest way to do this is go over to your your exposure tab here, go down to saturation and just turn that off, completely desaturate the image. Now, yes, this is a black and white image. I can continue to work on this with levels, curves, all my, my contrast adjustments, whatever I want to do with this, but we're a little bit limited in the power that we are actually given in another tool that Capture One has. Let's go ahead and reset that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go over to the color tab and we're going to go down and we're going to find the black and white palette here. And this is a tool specifically allowing us control over black and white images. Now, what we're going to do is just, first of all, tick this box that says enable black and white. That will turn our image black and white. And this pretty much looks exactly like it did a second ago when we just desaturated the image. But what's really cool is there's kind of two methods that we're going to look at of what we can control in Capture One. The first one you can think of is controlling how bright or dark colors are just below that level of saturation. So just pretend for a second that we put a filter over the image that just filters out all the color. Well, there's color underneath that still, so I can actually change the brightness of those colors individually. So for a second, let me deselect this box, and you can see that red is a predominant color in this image. This woman is waving this red sheet, and so I can obviously control red. In fact, that's the predominant color in here. So if I select Edit Black and White, you'll notice that when I take the red slider and I move this to the right, we are brightening up all of the reds in the image. Now also note that her face and costumes start to go bright too. And a lot of that has to do with the lighting of this image. There's a lot of red light and a lot of red tones that affect the overall image. If I go the opposite direction from 50%, you're going to see that we start to darken that. And at some point, we're actually gonna start darkening her face as well. And there's kind of a point of diminishing returns where it's too dark. Now, in an example like this, where red is more of a global color, I can approach this from the aspect of, I'm going to go do all of my global adjustments on this image, and I want to just match that mood. And then what I can do is actually go create a mask layer and I can brighten up the model's face. And if you want to know how to create masking layers, that's in that playlist as well. I'll link that in the description. Let's look at another example here. I want to convert this image to black and white. And one of the problems that I'm going to see when I go ahead and tick enable in black and white is that we just don't have a lot of emphasis on the model's face. This is kind of just a darker image. Part of the problem is that she's sort of backlit here, or at least side backlit. So let's disable black and white and look at the image and see what kind of tones that we have. Now, skin tones are going to lean more towards red and yellow in our spectrum here. And obviously we've got a lot of foliage. So there's a lot of green. So this probably is a good candidate for some nice separation. So if I go ahead and enable black and white, I'm going to head, bring my red channel up and you can see that we already start to brighten her face considerably. In fact, I cranked that all the way up. We also pulled some of the highlights back here, but that's okay. I'm gonna bring my yellow channel up a little bit too. You're gonna to notice that that affects more of the light coming in behind her. So maybe I tone that back. I'm not real sure where I want that yet. We're gonna go down to green and obviously there's a lot of plant life and foliage and trees in here. So you can expect when I turn green down to start darkening up that background, which it does. And now we start to have a nice separation between the model and the background. And this is exactly what I want. If I look at my cyan here, there is some cyan and it's mostly in this little gazebo thing back here. There's some other backgrounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that all the way down too, because I don't want that to be a distraction. I want that to go towards black. Blue as well, you're not gonna notice that much change, maybe just a little bit in the image and magenta, there's really no magenta 
magenta in this image. So if I do a quick before and after, here's before and here's after, and I've created a really interesting mood and something that I'm very happy with with this image. Another really cool example for this, and I think another argument for black and white in general, is when you shoot a scene that has colors in it that become distracting to your overall image. And let me give you a couple examples. So I visited the Dogfish Head Brewery last year and did the brewery tour and did a lot of photographing when I was there. And they have some really cool stuff. This, this, this tank has a really neat steampunk look to it. But unfortunately, when you're in a factory type situation, you have a lot of safety requirements. There's obviously not a design standpoint that went into the overall interior design of the building. And so if we look at this image in color, you're going to see that we have really loud orange on these brackets. These are kegs that are stored. And this is hard to see in this particular image, but this is this huge wall where they do like literally thousands of kegs of beer. And they store them in here and it's really interesting to look at. And it's hard to photograph because they've got all these orange attachments. The actual kegs have blue in them. It's just not a color scheme I'm crazy about. But when I do a black and white conversion, I'm able to control that. So let me go ahead and reset my black and white conversion panel here. And I'm going to show you what I was able to do. So if I go ahead and enable black and white, once again, we have specific control over colors. So we have kind of a flat image. And what I want to do is draw the eye end into the middle. And I want to reduce some of the attention to things like these orange brackets. So obviously those being orange, we know that we don't have an orange slider, but orange is a combination of red and yellow. So if I move my red slider, we can make those brighter, for instance. That didn't do the effect that I want. I want them to be subtle. We can also move the other direction and bring them back. And we can do the same with yellow. Since they're orange, it's going to darken them even more. And that's even better because look, now you don't even notice them. They're really drawn in with the background. I can also lighten up the tanks in the front or darken them, depending on which way I want to go. I might end up actually wanting to darken them. And we want to bring emphasis, but remember in color, let's go back, we have the silver tanks for the kegs, but they also have blue in them too. So what we want to do is address the blue. So if I move blue up in scale, it's going to lighten it. I don't really like that. It I mean, there's less competing in there, but I think the contrast is what's going to draw your eye in. So if I bring those down the other direction, so here's up and bring them down, you'll notice that I'm able to just isolate one color range in the image and I'm able to target that specific area. So this is something that's extremely handy. Now you may have noticed that on the black and white panel here, we have been working under color sensitivity and there's a second tab over here that says split tones. I'm going to select that and I want to explain what split toning is. So earlier I said that I wanted to think of this is we have this desaturation filter that's over the image. We're adjusting color regions underneath that. So you don't see color anymore, but we're able to adjust how bright or dark that color region is. And this affects our overall image. Now split toning is actually going to be on the other side of that filter. And it doesn't allow us to recolorize the image, but it allows us to tone the image. And if you've ever seen printed photographs, you'll realize that black and white photographs are rarely actually black and white. In fact, they're never black and white. There's usually some kind of tone to that. This can have have something to do with the paper. We have warm tone papers that start to bring your highlights to a warmer kind of yellow off white. We also have cool tone papers that go the other way and they make the image cooler by bringing those highlights more to blue because the paper just has that type of tone to it. You can actually as a printer go in and physically tone the paper. There's selenium toning, there's sepia toning. You could do old school processes like amber types, uh, albumin prints, tin types. Though those all have colors to them and then also we have things like cyanotypes which are very dramatic and you can get very strong strong toning to them. This is why most people call this monochrome and not black and white because the reality is in the computer it is exactly black and white but in the print world it rarely is. So if you're doing images that you want to share even digitally online you might consider coming up with some subtle toning. So let's look at how this works. So you have two sliders, actually you have four sliders here but there's two sets of sliders and one affects the highlights the other affects the shadows. So for instance if I look at the highlights I'm going to move the hue slider around and I'm not going to notice any change in my image at all. That's because we have to introduce some saturation. Right now it's completely desaturated. So if I slowly bring this up, and believe me, you can go, you know, let's bring it all the way up. You can go way too crazy with this. So this is just really subtle. You can see that our highlights are turning red. The way I like to work in here is go ahead and bring it up so you can see what your color tone is. I might want more this more gold or yellow. You can actually take it the other way, make it cooler, maybe more blue. And what I'm going to do then is drop my saturation. And this is kind of one of those things that when you're editing, go ahead and get the look. And when you think you've got it right, bring it back a little more because it just gets really intense really fast. I'm going to do the same with my shadows. So bring up the saturation and I can make my shadows warmer. I can make them more green. And so you can experiment around with this a little bit too. Kind of like that where they're both blue. I'm going to bring this down. And we have a cooler tone look to this.
And so this is very different than just a straight up black and white image. We've actually introduced some tonality into it by using color. It's another dimension of interest. Another thing I want to show you too is there are actually presets under this panel here. So if you go under these three straight lines here, the three horizontal lines, if I click on that, it's going to have a drop down. Now the first of these in here is going to say color default and you're going to go through these. These just reset all of my sliders on color sensitivity because they're more or less trying to replicate sensitivity of something like panchromatic film in this instance or back in the days where we used to use color filters over a lens so a red yellow filter a yellow filter so on and so forth if you go down to split toning it does a little bit of each and i can go down to just pure toning and i can look at these two and you'll notice that they're all subtle but they have very different effects on what they do to the overall mood of your photo so if you're not really sure how to tone an image or you're not familiar you don't even printing experience this is one way you can go in and kind of get a feel for different looks and you'll notice that you can see the sliders change even as I'm dragging over these to preview them here. So it's a very cool technique. You can see that Capture One is giving us an enormous amount of control over converting a color image to black and white or monochrome. I love the way that Capture One is set up because it treats this much like the old analog process. So when we shot film, film has a sensitivity to it. We're actually able to go in and replicate that with color sensitivity under that panel and we can actually go in and increase reds. We can make those brighter or darker and I actually argue you have more control over this because back in the old days when I shot film, you pretty much commit everything on the roll to one sensitivity type, which is fine, but there's no editing. There's no controlling that. You can do burning and dodging in the printing stage later, but it was just a much different process. With this, you can actually change and customize that sensitivity to each individual image. We don't use filters necessarily with color photography, like a red filter or a rat and red or an orange filter for contrast, but we just shoot them straight up, but we can control that in post. I also love the way that they address split toning because this is really important. Black and white photographs aren't really black and white. Now, when you get into printing, you'll realize that and people who have extensive printing experience kind of go with it with that in mind and it gives it a much more natural look. But even if you're just sharing your images online, you're putting them on Instagram or Facebook or whatever that is, you can start to replicate some of that toning and I think there's a lot of power to this. Anyway, if you haven't tried Capture One, I have a link in the show description. Download the free trial, check it out. I think you're gonna love the way your images look. I think there's some wonderful things that are happening in Capture One. So anyway, I'd love to hear from you guys. Drop me a comment. If you've enjoyed this video, remember to thumbs up, subscribe for more. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.